Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the 7th module of our hands on machine learning course and this 7th module is all about building machine learning models from scratch. So in my previous videos I have explained you what is the intuition and math behind a lasso regression model and in today's video we will be discussing what is the gradient descent for lasso regression and how gradient descent works for lasso regression. So once we understand all these things uh, in the next video we can move on to the hands on part where we will try to build this lasso regression model from scratch in python okay. So let's get started. So I'll just give you a quick recap of what we have seen in the intuition video and math video of lasso regression. So we know that lasso regression is a supervised learning model where we train with the labeled data set. Whereas in the case of unsupervised learning model, we train with the unlabeled data and the lasso regression is one of the examples of supervised learning models and it is a regression model. So further supervised learning can be classified into two types. One is classification and regression. When you are uh, trying to predict the class of a data point or the type of the data point, so that is called as a classification problem. But whenever you are trying to uh, you know predict some numerical value some continuous value so it is called as a regression problem let's say that you are trying to uh, predict whether an image represents a dog or cat so that represents a classification problem whereas in case you are trying to predict what is the salary a person is expected to make so in that case salary is a numerical value right so this will be a regression problem so lasso regression is a regression model where it will try to predict some continuous value and the full form of this lasso regression is least absolute shrinkage and selection operator because this lasso regression model tries to shrink the weight values and thereby try to eliminate those uh, you know values which are not important for the final predictions so it can also be used as an automated feature selection uh, technique so that is why it, it gets this name of least absolute shrinkage and selection operator and the main uh, thing about lasso regression is that it uses l1 regularization in order to avoid overfitting so overfitting is the issue that we get in machine learning models when they overtrain on the training data so in that case they only have good uh, you know performance good accuracy on the training data whereas if you uh, you know test the model with a uh, new test data then the uh, performance of the model will be very poor so that is called as an overfitting issue and this is overcome by uh, you know the lasso regression using the l1 regularization technique so we have also seen uh, all about this l1 regularization in the previous video so the only difference is that so to a normal regression model we add a penalty term called as lambda so this penalty term tries to eliminate a few weight values that are not significant so let's say that we have uh, 10 input features uh, in our uh, data set let's say that we are trying to predict what is the salary a person is going to make based on certain input features so these input features are nothing but what is their uh, you know academic performance what is their job performance and uh, all those things so some features may be important for our final predictions and some uh, you know input features may not be important so the lasso regression so this particular you know l1 regularization tries to uh you know eliminate those input features by uh, you know pushing the value of the weight towards zero so let's say that we have an input feature feature for the name of the person so we know that a person won't get a job based on this name right so what happens is the lasso regression model will try to push the weight of that uh, particular name column towards zero so uh, what happens is that particular column will become a zero so the idea here is to you know in order to reduce the complexity of the model so that is all about this regularization and uh, particularly l1 regularization we use this penalty term in order to either eliminate coefficients or to shrink their values in order to avoid this overfitting so you can see the example curve here so the red color curve represents overfitting because it changes regularly with all the data points so there is not a general trend whereas if you see this green color curve there is a general trend so first of all it increases and then slightly decreases and so on so there is a trend whereas you cannot find the trend in the red color curve so this red color curve is a overfitted model whereas this green color curve is an optimum model so that is all about this regularization and its main purpose is to avoid overfitting and we have also seen uh, the cost function for the lasso regression model which is given by this particular equation so this is similar to uh, the you know mean squared error that we add for our linear regression loss function so the only difference is that we add this penalty term which is you know lambda which is our uh, penalty term or our regularization parameter into our uh, you know weight values so the number of weight uh, you have in a model is equal to the number of input features. So let's say that uh, we have a data set and this data set contains about 10 columns. Out of these 10 columns, one is the output column which we are trying to predict and the other 9 columns are our input features column. So the number of weights you have is equal to the number of input features that you have. So in case you have, uh, you know, 9 input features, in that in that case you will have 9 different weight values. So that's what, uh, you know, the you know, importance of weights. So this WJ is basically an array. So WJ represents 
represents uh, each weight value in that particular weight array. So you can see here. So M represents the total number of data points or in other words, the total number of rows you have in your data and N represents the total number of input features or, or in other words, the total number of columns you have in your data set except the output column and YA is the true value. So the true value uh, which is present in our data set and YA cap is the value predicted by our model. Okay, so and uh, lambda is our penalty term and W is the parameter of the model. To be precise, it's the weight of the model. So what we will do is we will use our model in order to make some predictions and those values will be stored in this Y at. Okay, and after that we will try to find the difference between Y and this Y at and it uh, it will give us, uh, you know, give the cost function for our model. So cost function basically tells you, uh, you know, what is the difference between your true value and predicted value so that is the importance of this cost function so the reason we are discussing about this cost function is it is very uh, you know important for us in order to implement gradient descent so gradient descent is uh, you know based on the cost function of a model so that's why we need to discuss about this cost function so now we can move on to the gradient descent part so basically how a gradient descent works is so you can uh, you know take the weight value in your uh, x axis and you can take the cost function in your y axis so how we will generally proceed in uh, machine learning is that we will randomly initiate the parameter values okay so let's say that this is our randomly initiated uh, initial value for this weight so this can be any value and for this particular value let's say that our uh, cost function value is at this point so you can see here uh, this is the upper part of this uh, axis that means the cost function value is very high so it means your model is not going to make good prediction so it is going to make some errors so that is what is signified by the this position of this weight so if you choose the weight at this point your cost function will lie at this point so what we need to do is so from this point we need to reach to this lower part of this curve okay so when you plot a weight and cost function so you will get a curve like this so it is called as a bell shaped curve so we need to reach this point so this point is called as the global minimum so what this signifies is so if you choose the weight at this particular point you will have the minimum cost function so our goal uh, in machine learning is to minimize this cost function so which uh, means our uh, model is performing well or in other words uh, you know the model is not making any errors or so on so we need to reach to this global minimum from this uh, initial point okay so that's what we are interested in so we implement a gradient descent algorithm where we will try to keep on changing this weight value so you can see now uh, the point is here so what this basically means is we are uh, you know gradually changing the weight value and now we are choosing the weight value from uh, you know, at this particular point so you can see here now what happens your cost function decreases so we will uh, do this repeatedly in order to reach this point so if you start from a random initial point your gradient descent works in order to reach this global minimum so you know if you uh, you know uh, consider a weight at this point so you your gradient you know the first model so i'll just show you so what happens let's say that we are uh, taking the weight value at this particular point so in that case uh, your cost function may uh, be at this particular point so that this gradient descent again will try to uh, come to this global minimum starting from this point so it will try to uh, you know come to this particular point so this is how gradient descent works so no matter at what part of the curve uh, you work on it will try to reach this global minimum and this is the working of a uh, gradient descent so we have uh, you know discussed this multiple times in our uh, you know models so this is how gradient descent you know if you want to visualize in a three dimensional space so i have just show, shown this in a two dimensional space where we have weight alone whereas in the case of three dimension it may look like this uh, kind of a uh, you know curve so what happens is we take this both weight value and the bias value and then we will try to apply this gradient descent in order to find the optimum value of weight and bias. So the main goal of this gradient descent is to uh, get an optimum weight value and bias value. So when you have the optimum weight value and bias value, so your model is going to make good prediction. So that's the idea behind a gradient descent model. So I'll just give you a definition for this gradient descent. So gradient descent is an optimization algorithm. So we are going to optimize our machine learning model, uh, you know, which is used for minimizing the cost function. So this is our final goal, which is to minimize the cost function. So minimum cost function means there is not much difference between the true value and the predicted value, which uh, means that your model is making correct predictions. So minimizing the cost function in various machine learning algorithms, it is used for updating the parameters of the learning model. So parameters of the learning model is nothing but my weight and bias. So this is the for, you know the formula for a gradient descent. So you can see here. So this W2 is my updated weight and W1 is my initial weight. So if I you know come to this particular point, so if you see this, so this is my initial weight and the second uh, you know circle is my updated weight. So that's what is represented in this particular equation. So you can see here. So this W1 is my initial weight and W2 is my updated weight. So I will take my uh, initial weight and I will separate it with this term L into 
dj divided by dw so what this basically means is l represents the learning rate so learning rate is nothing but how much change do you want to give to your model so you can see this gradient descent curve so you can see so we are starting from a point and we are reaching this particular point so we are changing the weight value right so this learning rate is nothing but how much change do you want to give to your uh, weight value so that is represented by l and uh, you can see here okay so l is our learning rate and dj divided by dw is nothing but the partial derivative of cost function with respect to w so we are uh, you know finding the de uh, derivative of the cost function so we have already seen what is the equation of the cost function or what is the formula for cost function for uh, lasso regression so we take that cost function and we derive it in terms of w in terms of uh, weight so what uh, this basically tells you is how much your cost function changes if your weight changes so again i'll go to this curve so i'm uh, you know i'm uh, starting from my initial random value of weight and i'm you know uh, changing the weight value right now my cost function changes so if i take this so this is my initial cost function value okay so this point is my initial cost function value and once i update the weight the updated uh, you know Wait, so now the cost function will kind of decrease so you can see so this is the difference right so this basically tells you how much your uh, cost function changes when you you know change the weight value so this is nothing but the slope of this particular curve okay so that is represented by this dj divided by dw so this is what we use in order to uh, you know minimize the cost function by changing the weight value so this is the first equation in order to update our weights and the second equation is for updating the bias value okay so a model will have multiple weight values so you can consider a weight as a list of values so which is uh, you know as i've told you earlier the number of weight values you have in a model is equal to the number of input features that you have so it is basically an array or you can consider it as a list of uh, values whereas bias is a single value so it is a single real number value so that is one main thing that you need to remember and this is the formula for uh, updating the bias value so which is basically the same thing so w2 which is the updated weight is equal to initial weight minus learning rate into dj divided by db D, sorry dw and b2 is equal to so which is my updated bias is equal to initial bias minus learning rate into dj divided by db so you can also call this dj by db and dj by d uh, no w as so these are called as my gradients these two terms dj by dw and dj by d uh, b so these are called as gradients of my model or you can also call these as derivatives so the only difference is that uh, we we will have different formulas for this dj by dw and dj by db okay so that is the next thing that we are going to discuss so in lasso regression this is a bit tricky so we have two cases for our uh, you know gradient for weight so this is my uh, dj w by db value which is my partial derivative of cost function with respect to w so we have two cases if your weight value is greater than zero in that case uh, we use this equation in you know in case your uh, weight value is less than or equal to zero we use uh, this particular equation so the only difference is that in this case we take a positive penalty term and in this case we take a negative penalty term so that's the difference so what is the significance of this uh, you know positive weight and the negative weight is that so if uh, you know let's say that uh, we are trying to predict the price of the house so uh, we have features like what is the number of rooms we have in our house what is the size of that house and what is the crime rate in that particular area and so on right so if we consider about uh, the relationship between the total number of rooms in a house and the price of the house there is a, a linear relationship between them so there is a positive correlation which means if the total number of rooms increases in a house then uh, the price of the house you know increases right so logically we can say that so in that case that particular column so the number of rooms column will have a positive weight okay so this basically tells you uh, the weight value tells you how much important does a particular column is to the output variable so in case uh, you consider the total number of crime rates that is happening uh, in that particular area so in, what happens in that case people don't want to buy houses in that area so this will negatively or uh, you know inversely affect the price of the house so in that cases you will have a negative weight value so positive weight value will basically tell you so that particular feature is uh, you know desirable for our output column whereas negative weight value tells us that if this value increases uh, the uh, final output decreases so that is the importance of weight value and so on okay so and whenever you have a positive weight value you have this positive penalty term and whenever you have this uh, you know weight value is either zero or less than zero which is basically a negative number so this is a positive number this is negative number so you have to take uh, minus lambda okay and uh, the 
dj by db value is the same for both the cases so it won't change uh, okay so dj by db is equal to minus 2 divided by m summation of y i minus y cap so where y cap or this y at is my value predicted by our model and y is uh, the true value okay so we take the summation of it and we plug in the values and you will get this dj value and dw value again a uh, dj value and db value so once you get this value you can put all these values in this equation which is my gradient descent updating weights and bias value equation and once you do this you will get the most optimum weight value and bias value so these two are my perfect uh, you know weight value and bias value for my lasso regression model so these are the things that you need and the final equation that we need in order to build our lasso regression is the equation of the straight line which is y is equal to wx plus b so as i've already told you lasso regression is actually built on top of the linear regression so the only difference is that how gradient descent works for linear regression and lasso regression so we have the extra penalty term when it comes to lasso regression but we don't have this penalty term in the linear regression so the uh, reason for adding this penalty term is in order to you know reduce the overfitting problem so how we will approach this uh, lasso regression is that so these are the equations that you need in order to build your lasso regression model in python so what we will uh, basically try to do is so we will have our data set so we will have both x and y where x is our input features and y is the output variable we, we, we want to predict so this will be given from our data set after that we will try to initiate uh, some random values for this uh, weight and bias so we generally initiate the values with zero so w2 will be an array uh, which contains all the values as zero and bias will be a normal uh, value so it will be uh, the value will be zero in the case of bias so first of all we will try to initiate weight value and bias value so once we do that we will try to plug in this value in this equation so after that we will try to make prediction and we apply this gradient descent uh, algorithm so now it will try to uh, go to that global minimum part where it is the optimum weight value and bias value using these two equations okay and once we do that uh, we will get the optimum weight value and bias value and we can substitute that value in this equation so now you have a different x value we can uh, get the y value say for example if you want to uh, predict the price of the house so you can give all the input features and now based on this learning so learning is nothing but finding this optimum weight value and bias value so based on this value our model can uh, give you what is the price of the house is expected so this is how the gradient descent for lasso uh, you know lasso regression works and the main importance of this gradients is that uh, this penalty term will try to push the value of the weight and uh, you know weight value towards zero so which we have already discussed because uh, the purpose of this is to decrease the complexity of the model so whatever may be the weight value if it is greater than zero or it is less than zero so its goal is to push the value towards zero so if uh, like how would do it is like so the importance of this uh, gradients equation is that to uh, make the model understand which column is important and which column is not important so if you see this xj is nothing but the individual columns that we have so it's okay if you don't understand all the terms in this equation so you will understand it better once we are implementing this uh, and so on in python so in that i will show you the data set as well as how this equation works and so on so it will you know give you uh, more clarification so the only thing here that you have to understand is the lasso regression model this penalty term tries to push the weight value towards zero okay so that will uh, reduce your problem of overfitting so this is all that we need so first of all we will initiate our weight value and bias value and then we will implement our gradient descent in order to find the most optimum uh, you know parameters of the model and after that we can use this linear regression equation in order to find uh, the final output so this is what we are going to be doing in our python so we will basically write all these formulas in python and we will create a class called as lasso regression and we can use that particular python class in order to make predictions using the lasso regression model so that's it from my side i hope you understand all the things that is covered in this video and in the next video i'll explain you how we can you know build this system in python okay so that's it from my side i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching